Okay, so it's been a couple of days, and I'm back with the FDS. Uh, yesterday, I tried modifying the drive to write disks, and it didn't work. I said that I did the modification, I think, or that I hadn't done it, but I thought I did the modification right, and I didn't. I had accidentally shorted two pins on the wide connector that goes to the actual disk drive right in the back. So it would say it was done writing the disk, and done formatting the disk, and all that other stuff. And then when I go to read the disk back through the QDC and test it in the emulator to see if it read, it stayed as a bad um, side A of Golf US course. <laughs> I managed to get an error 23 in an emulator. And uh, it recognized side B as it being side B. But today I went ahead and found out that I had accidentally shorted those pins and fixed that error. So now... Aha! See? This is that Brad Taylor demo I was talking about, where he, uh, I'm not, I don't know if he's, I don't know exactly what he's doing, I think he's using IRQs or something. Uh, well, he's using IRQs to change the palette mid-scan line, I believe, and that allows him where one set of tiles uh, ends, he changes the palette and gives a different palette to a second set of tiles so that there's more than the standard limit of 13 colors on screen. I think each row of... well, I'll reset it. So I think each row of uh, tiles uses one palette and then the next row uses a different one, so he's got... wow, exactly one pixel of space. He's got exactly one scan line between all of them where he can change the palette for the next one. I think that's what he does, and then he's using something else to generate the wave uh, that scrolls through it. I might have that totally wrong, but at least I think that's what it is. And then if I flip the disc to side B, I'm going to remove the label. And maybe I might keep that on there and uh, rewrite golf. I flip the disc and reset. It loads to an iSenshi Nicole demo where it displays the wave ram while it's playing the NSF. Alright, so that's enough of that. What I'm going to do now is stop the video and hook everything up differently. I'm going to need two more RAM adapters. One for my NES RAM adapter and then another one so that I don't have to keep swapping cables between the QDC and uh, FDS and RAM adapter and everything. Because what I'm going to have to do now, because I only have this RAM adapter, is unplug the cable from this. This is not screwed closed at all. Unplug this cable plug it into the QDC, and then, because the RAM adapter no longer has a cable in it, I'm going to need to put the QDC cable back into the RAM adapter, and I have to do that every time I want to test and rewrite the disk. So I'm going to need another RAM adapter specifically to use the QDC, and then a third RAM adapter so that I can make my NES RAM adapter. And, yeah, this is, this is insane. But, and now we are totally back in business. Um, there's three minutes left on the video, so I'm going to have to rush through it. Here's the QDC program, and I've uh, temporarily changed my Windows theme so that you can read it. There's all the buttons. I've already initialized it. There you go. So now what we're going to do is read from the disk. So here, it's saved on here as Demo 2. So, we go here, read disk. Uh, save, I'll save this as... Um, Go back to FDS. I'll save this as default.raw. Yes, I would like to replace it. And now it's reading the disk. It 
dumping done. All right, data convert. We select our file. Oh, right, I forgot. It takes a while to read. So raw to FDS. Default.raw gets immediately converted to default.fds. So we go down here to the FDS folder. Default.fds loads up in Estopia, and it's Brad Taylor's demo. So now we're going to rewrite the disk. So the disk is already in the drive. Uh, I'm not sure if you have to do this, but it makes sense. I do it to be safe. Format disk. Oh, close that. Format disk asks, are you sure? Yes, and then it immediately begins to erase the disk. And it does this in one pass, which is super cool. Done. There we go. It's not like uh, reading a normal FDS disk where sometimes it's tums yeah. sometimes it takes like two or three passes. No, that's just done. So now write disk. Uh, what can we put on this one? All right, why not? Falcian side A. It's writing Falcian. Then it says it's done, but it takes a little extra time. Passes over it again. I'm, I'm assuming it's just going back to the front, not actually writing anything. So flip it over to side B. Format disk. Yes. Formatting it again. It's done. Write it. And now we write Falci inside B. So now I'm going to stop it, reconnect everything, and then show you that now Falcian is on that disk. So now we're back to this. Take it, put it inside A. Now watch me, I wrote it backwards. Load it up. And there you go. It takes a little while, but it's really super easy. Uh, yeah, 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 flip to side B. Now there's the question. Why would you still use disks when you can, you showed in the first video, you can directly write to the RAM adapter? It's the same question people with flash cartridges get asked. Why use a flash cart why use the real cartridges when you've got a flash? Because yeah, it's, it's just better. So uh yeah to get one of these all you've got to do is contact Kitahe and I'll put his site in the description so you can visit that and do whatever you want. And I suppose that's it.